Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bhim Lendu Brijesh and I will be presenting on behalf of ISSH Academy. The theme for this month is congenital hand deformity and the articles which we are going to discuss is the polycization of index finger methods and result in aplasia and hypoplasia of the hand. This landmark article was read out by Dr. Buck Cramco, 1971 March at the annual meet of American Society for the Surgery of Hand and was later published in December 1971. The background to this article is that patients with hypoplastic or aplastic are quite dexterous but pulp to pulp pinch is absent which leads to a lesser job or professional opportunity. Now the accepted method of managing these patients are polycization and in the year 1959 to 1962 there was a high incidence of congenital thumb aplasia or hypoplasia probably to a thalidomide tragedy. This also led search of surgeries performed for this condition which is the polycization but the results were suboptimal which gave bad name to this procedure. So Dr. Buck Ramko with a vast experience in polycization came forward with some theoretical concepts and surgical modification for better outcome for these patients. So technical consideration and theoretical concepts which he put forward was shortening of the overall length of the index finger and removal of second metacarpal bone epiphysis to prevent future elongation of uh, the polycized finger, rotation of index finger about its longitudinal axis by 160 degree and palmar abduction by 140 degree while skeletal fixation which we will be explaining in the subsequent slides. If we draw a line extending from the palmar aspect of the pulp of the index finger and the thumb both of them intersect at an angle of 150 degree and if we do a pulp to pulp pinch between the index and the thumb finger again the angulation is somewhere between 150 to 160 degree and therefore the rationale of rotating the polycized finger by 160 degree is quite acceptable. Now, the fixation of a thumb in 40 degree palmar abduction helps in optimal movement of the thumb. The basic principles and surgical modification which was suggested by Buck Ramco was at the neurovascular pedicle level, skeletal readjustment, muscular stabilization and skin incision and we will be dealing with each of them separately. So at the neurovascular pedicle level, the digital artery going to the radial side of the long finger was divided and the digital nerve is dissected proximally so that the polycized index finger can be mobilized without any problem. The next important uh, thing is the skeletal readjustment with preservation of metacarpophalangeal joint and the skeletal shortening depends upon the level of hypoplasia of the phalanx. If the phalanx are uh, hypoplastic then a part of the length of metacarpal wound is preserved. However, if the length are adequate then entire metacarpal bone of the uh, index finger is removed and only the metacarpal head is preserved. Metacarpophalangeal joint then becomes the carpometacarpal joint as shown in the inset photograph. The another important thing is that uh, after the rotation of the transposed index finger, the volar uh, point A becomes dorsal and the dorsal point B becomes volar. But since there is extension uh, possible at the metacarpophalangeal joint uh, of the index finger, which is not desirable at the newly formed carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. Uh, he uh, suggested the rotation of uh, uh, the metacarpal head by 70 to 80 degree so that the volar B point becomes the distal point and the dorsal A point becomes the proximal point of the skeletal attachment. The muscular stabilization is important for both mobility and stability. However, the stability given preference over the mobility so the long flexors are left as such and they are allowed to adapt to the new position uh, over a period of time. However, uh, the extensor tendons that is the extensor digitorum communis to the index finger is divided just proximal to the metacarpophalangeal joint and after the skeletal repositioning they are reattached to the proximal phalanx of the thumb and thereby the extensor digitorum communis then starts acting as an abductor pollicis longus whereas the extensor indices is shortened by the same length as the metacarpal bone and to end repair is done so as the extensor indices starts functioning as a 
extensor pollicis longus. Apart from that, a longitudinal incision is given on both the sides of the long extensor uh, tendons so that the intrinsic muscles get separated uh, from the uh, extensor expansion as well as from the periosteum of the proximal phalanx. At the same time, proximal dissection is also done from its attachment to the metacarpal bone uh, before the osteotomy of the metacarpal bone is done, uh, uh, taking into consideration the neurovascular uh, bundles of these muscles which are preserved. Now, once the skeletal relocation is done, then the first dorsal interossei functions as an abductor pollicis brevis, whereas first palmar interossei then functions as the adductor pollicis brevis. The lateral expansions are re-sutured to the lateral <clears throat> bands and woven back in U-shaped as shown in the inset. Fourth important step suggested was the incision of the skin which was to be placed more palmarly instead of on the radial side which was the uh, traditional way of uh, putting an incision. And also the dorsal longitudinal incision facilitate the release of introsci muscle and reattachment. Now from 1959 till the publication of this article in 1971, a total of 73 patients were operated. 100 congenital hand uh, were subjected to polycization. 27 patients had uh, polycization of both the hands. In 21 patients, unilateral polycization was done because there was no contralateral abnormality. In 16 patients, unilateral polycization was done because the contralateral malformation did not need any polycization and in nine patient unilateral polycization was done the contralateral uh, side also need pol needed polycization but at the time of publication of the article it was not done for the post operative course after three weeks of immobilization joint movement was achieved by only few degrees at three to nine weeks, all patient had a new thumb to long finger pinch. At four to five months, all patient could touch the little finger. Active flexion of polycized fingers started by four weeks in few cases, but mostly by three months. And active flexion kept improving till the end of one year with adaptive shortening of flexor muscle. The greatest variability in the outcome could be seen in the thumb abduction range of movement and strength. It depended upon the strength of the extensor muscle which was uh, transferred and the presence of associated congenital anomalies like radial club hand and five finger hand. None of the patients showed any vascular or neurological deficit except for one with anomalous absence of palmar artery. Six patients required skin grafting and best results could be seen in hypoplastic thumb with preserved intrinsic muscle. So the optimal time suggested in this article was one year because the thumb feeling starts at six months and also earlier the surgery done, the thumb has more time to adapt and transform to the needs of the polycized finger. So suggested that this surgery should not be offered to patients with radial club hand where centralization is not possible. So to conclude, the basic principles of thumb polyization remain the same till date since this landmark article with very few changes in the skin incision pattern even in the recent techniques of polyization. Thanks for watching.